Hi, welcome to today's video. What I am going to do today is show you how to get a hold of copies of the database data that I use in many of these workflows. One of y'all went and dropped me a comment saying, great video, wish they could have the data. They would like to try to follow along with the same set of data. While I cannot give you access to my database, to directly access it uh, from the MySQL, as well as in order to get a hold of that, you'd have to install the MySQL client, which a lot of you might not be able to do. I can, however, create a transportable set of files that you can use and load where and how you would like to. I originally started out looking to save these as Alteryx database files. But I ran into a little bit of an issue, and I will mention that as we go through these videos. So I went ahead and decided to use Alteryx, obviously, to make this whole process a little bit easier to start with, since I had a large number of database tables, and I could manually do each one individually. I decided it made sense for me to go ahead and utilize Alteryx and put together some of the information or some of the processes and methodologies that are in a number of my videos which is create an app to do the work for me and what this will require is to go ahead and create a chained app as well as a macro to do the actual work so we'll look at how this works very quickly we can come into here to my directory and you say here, see here I have my move daisy hill tables app and if I click on that it brings up automatically the application interface and in this case this is the first question which is which schema do you want to bring the data from I have a number of schemas out there that I work with uh, daisy hills already moved uh, we can go ahead and leave that or choose one of my other ones a simple one here happens to be the data lake schema has a couple of tables in it but Daisy Hill has a number of tables in it the second question it asks is where would you like to put the data you can either type in the directory or go into the browse so if we come to this machine and we go to this PC go to the hard drive go into my Alteryx workflows and my work in progress directory Soon there's a lot of temp files and they need to clean those up actually. So that's directory, so we'll read the tables from the data lake and move them into this directory. Click on continue, it'll actually look at what tables exist in the database and bring me up the a list and lets me choose some, one, none, or all. In this case, let's just go ahead and choose both of these tables these were just very very small tables that were used for a little development work and I hit continue it'll go ahead and do that work for me a couple of things to note when I built this application is I wanted to see all of the log records so you can see here that I ran my macro twice read from two database files and wrote each of those out to a dat file and we'll look at that more in detail but being the person that likes to know how things work and don't like things going on in the dark i went ahead and also said here is the table name here's the records that were in it and here is the file name that it was put into also from this log if i want to i can just click on the data file itself it'll bring up my little text editor and show me what that data looks like again it's very very basic data it was done for a short little example that someone wanted to see and we used it there but this way you can go ahead and create a directory that has all of the database tables from the selected schema in my case i did this for daisy hill and it brings it down into a directory that I can then use to move with. Look at Daisy Hill out here. What I created is a directory in here called table copy. 
and then all the dot 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 dat files to sequential pipe delimited files are sitting in there how did i do this again i sort of put together steps that i've used in the past it's very nice to reuse but keep in mind that when you build applications or macros what you'll want to do is to not work from the outside in which is don't take one that works and recreate it new start with the workflow that you need and turn it into the app or the macro that way you're sure that the pieces in the middle work but use the existing ones as a template so this is my basic chained application here's the main application what it does it starts out with a set of drop down of a list of the schemas that is hard coded and stored in a file because that doesn't change very often it then goes in it reads that data dictionary with a data input using a table or query to query the data catalog within the MySQL database. It also asks you for the target directory, brings that in so I know where it's going. It actually writes both of those out as YXDB files after doing some manipulations of them so that this is what is passed into the second one. So the second one will have the list of tables and the target directory so it can move forward. What the second step of the app does is it goes ahead and uses the interface for checkbox, the list box right here, which will list all of this out. It reads the name and value pair from the file and the previous step so that you can choose what they are it then does the update and splitting again if you look back at some of the other macros we're going to detail how all this works my target directory stuff is put together into the workflow so that it will be able to work and then in the middle here I call my macro that actually does the work and so when I have multiple records feeding into that macro as control parameters, it will execute for each iteration that I send it. Take a look at the macro very quickly. There's the macro. It is very well, very simple and complicated both at the same time. Again, look back in my list of videos. We talk about how to make macros that are efficient and effective. But essentially what I do is I read from the MySQL database and move it into a CSV file that uses the pipe for a delimiter. It also does a row count to make some output so I know what was read, how many rows, and where it went to. All that information is coming from another stubbed out text input. And then my two parameters, the target file name and the table name. And those are used to update the two inputs that are here and there, as well as the output that goes here. Again, a reminder that I can have any number of control parameters coming in, and then I can use as many actions from those control parameters as I do. For this case, I happen to have two actions from each of these. So the target file name goes both into the target output, as well as the summary information here. And then the same happens for the table name that includes the schema. It goes into the input as well as it goes into the count records here so that we know how many records we have. Putting that all together gets me the nice output. Again, just wanted to fly through that very quickly so that you can see where this information came from and to look at how you can remember how to reuse some of your existing workflows to do the work for you to just to make your life easier even though it's not a development need it's just really a personal maintenance need and then the next thing I did in you'll see the link to this in the comments of this video I went to Google and to my Google Drive and I created a shared folder which I share to everyone that has the link in a read-only format and so I will again post this link here if you paste this link into your web browser you'll be able to see all these files and then you can process those files so we'll need to talk about how to process those files so there are three ways that you can 
access this data. One way is to simply come into Google Drive shared here, highlight which of the data files you want, and you can download those simply the reverse of how I uploaded all of these to this drive. And then you can have copies that are sitting on your machine. Second method is to go ahead and install the Google Drive app, which will go ahead and create a local copy and keep it updated from Google Drive. So this is my drive and here's my data share so they're sitting there when they get updated they will be updated here as well so if you have access to google drive app or the ability to install apps on your machine you can have access to this and then this can be read directly because it is a local copy as well from altrix and the third way is that altrix has a connector to actually read from a google drive without loading the files locally. So I am going to download and then install and then configure some tools that Altrix has developed so you can directly access files on a Google Drive. As you can see, this page is posted in the comments for this video. You must have a Altrix community account in order to access this and download it. Accounts are free. Please sign up. It's where you can find a lot of good information. I have not downloaded nor configured this yet, so this video might be choppy as I try to do both of those steps. But first, we're going to go ahead and download it. As you can see, it comes from Altrix Pro products. It's supposedly it's the most current version. It allows us to go ahead and access Google Drives. So let's click on the download. We're going to go ahead and save this YXI, which is an Altrix formatted interface file. It's very small, very easy to go. It's down. I'm going to go ahead and open it and see what it does. It brings up my Altrix designer which happens to be on the other page. Can't drag it over right now, but we can go ahead and show you that it wants to install it. Looks to be fairly quick. The installation is successful in 49 seconds. We'll close this window. We'll bring my workflow over. Let's go ahead and search tools for Google. I do not know where this is. Google Drive input, Google Drive output seems simple. Let's go ahead and find out where they're put. Looks like gray. Let's drag this down. It's here. Add remove tools. See if anything new is on here. Looks like it's probably in connectors. Let's turn connectors on. There it is. It's in connectors. So now we have connectors up here and we can have some other MongoDB, etc. Things I don't use is where you find your SharePoint access as long as well as some of the file stores that are on the cloud. So next we will attempt to configure this to go ahead and get to the files that I've created. So beginning with the new connector for Google Drive, which is Google Drive input, We'll create a simple workflow that will read one of those files so that then I can move it elsewhere or move it into a database or however I would like to use it. 
can configure this, it asks me for three different methods. Sign in using web browser, get files from the URL. I have found that getting files from the URL is the quickest way of doing that. And again, I've posted in the comments the URL for my shared drive. So just simply paste that in here. And this is where it gets a little spooky. I need to click on connect. It will ask me to go ahead and give a strange account access to my Google Drive. Again, this has to do with how this widget has been built. I am sure that's why it's not part of Altrix regular yet. But what you'll see is the screen that looks much like this. I have copied it a little bit just to clean up some security. But it will show that you have to give Groovy Bonus 338615 access to your account. And you go into it a little bit further, you'll find that that is a, a generated Altrix account to in order to facilitate the access through Google. So I did a little research. I feel comfortable doing this. If you don't, keep in mind that you can always rescind it after you've done it, which I will show you at the end of this part of the video. But when you see this, go ahead and click on your account. And that's is where the scariness sort of begins, is that the next page that pops up is that Google hasn't verified this app, which is sort of interesting, but it's pretty new. And it talks about the developer is Corey Handa Hernandez at Altrix.com. But for now, I go ahead and I clicked on Advanced. And it says go to Groovy Bonus Whatever. And this is where this site will grant access. You notice I've already granted that access to my drive. So it just tells me that. Otherwise, it goes ahead and will create it the first time. If you're like me and you have some security turned on, I also get an email saying that I did this. But having done that, I can now go into continue, and now we've got access to that Google Drive from Altrix going through their new connector. So if we bring that up, you see here that there is a the name for their for their shared drive. Clicking on that will bring up the different tables or files that are sitting out there on that drive. Clicking on one of those it doesn't give you a nice feedback here, which is just a little, again, going into the not quite comfortable level. This has been picked. I found I need to go into this. This is a flat file. I need to go into Options. I select this as a CSV. You notice there's only four types that it can handle. So it is very limited. And when I tried this the first time, I tried them as YXDBs, and I found that some of the larger ones were not reading. They were somehow timing out or aborting, giving me an error, even though I could read those through my Google Drive interface or on a downloaded file. Everything was working fine. They did not work going through this connector, so I dropped them into CSVs. One thing that we'll need to know is that the... It is not delimited with a comma. It is instead delimited with a custom delimiter. We'll put the pipe in there. Make sure that you click off this. You notice it didn't take it the first time, which I found to be very strange. It likes to wait and do this a little bit later. Still there. Interesting. I've had fun with this one, by the way. I click in run. Let's go ahead and drop a browse on to the end of it just so we can see what the data looks like. This didn't actually work because if you look at the data that comes through here, it didn't take my delimiter. I actually had to, had to run it through once. I was trying a little bit different. Now giving a custom delimiter. We can do this again and run it. And for some reason, the second time is the charm. Again, this is something that's under development. It does come from Altrix. Be a bit confident, but be careful with it. But here you can see that it went ahead and read that file from directly going to Google Drive, going through a little bit of security buffer that's put in there, and off we go. So again, if you are worried about what it is that you have just done, so to provoke this in the future, go into your Google Drive.
because this is being used as a pass through into the shared drive. Click on settings, click on manage apps, zoom in or scroll down to the bottom. And you'll see right here it is Groovy, Groovy Bonus. Options is you can disconnect it from your drive if you don't want to leave it hanging there and just re-permit it each time that you will be doing it. Moving all this back out of the way. So this is very easy how I can now directly read from any of those tables and do what I wish on the other side as far as putting them into my own database, putting them into another data format, storing it somewhere else, and you can move forward. So I hope that this helps you see how to get a hold of some of my data sets if you need to get a hold of them, as well as to expand, expand out your knowledge of what you can do with macros and apps to do some work for you as well as looking at a new connector that Alteryx has put out there that's more or less in a development phase but it's been validated through their internal resources so don't be shy about using it if you have any special data you would like to see from my videos want to see something new with the videos have questions about this videos please subscribe Drop me some comments and have a great day.